So in this video we're going to make a dual band long range repeater. Now some time ago I made a single band long range repeater and uh, a lot of people seem to like that one but uh, this time I wanted it to also work on the 5 GHz spectrum. Now the reason I want it to work with 5 GHz is because I pay for a 100 megabit connection with Virgin Media and I have got their new Superhub 2 which is a dual band uh, router but unfortunately because of the limitations of 2.4 GHz when I connect to the 2.4 GHz connection it doesn't give me that full speed because uh, you can't cram that much data through its spectrum so I have to use a 5 GHz connection in order to uh, get all that speed so I came up with this idea now it is based on uh, an Edimax dual band repeater which uh, I'll put a link in the description below to uh, how to find the specs on this and where you can purchase it on eBay and uh, it's very very easy to set up you don't need any MAC addresses or anything like that you just need to know your password and then uh, click it and it automatically does it for you it's really really simple so let's get onto the bench then and I'll show you how I made it so to make the dual channel repeater what I've got here is a couple of cans this one uh, I believe it had grapefruits in it and uh, I've chose this one because it's really really smooth it doesn't have the ridges that you normally get with say a baked bean tin and that is quite important when you're building a cantenna and here I've got a coffee can it's a small Kenko one just slightly bigger diameter than this one and this one's going to be for my 5 gigahertz this one for the 2.4 gigahertz now this coffee can here did have a ridge around it which I've removed just with a normal can opener so you get a nice neat job removing that ridge now obviously these cans aren't as long as uh, cantenas are built in the past but uh, I'm not going for range here all I want to do is go around 45 meters and blow through a couple of brick walls so hopefully these will give me the power on both the 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz to uh, bring that signal into my workshop so the coax I'm going to use is the type that you find in old laptops and this has been scrapped out of an old laptop so it's really thin and it's easy to solder to um, using something like LMR 195 is just too thick so this is a compromise and normally you would connect a BNC connector up like this one here to uh, solder the uh, driven element to that goes up inside uh, your cantenna but uh, I'm not using one of these I'm going to be soldering the coax directly to the can so what I've got here is one of these telescopic antennas you can pick them up from lots of different places you can even buy them for less than a couple of pound so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop out this section here and I'm going to feed the coax up into that and then solder this onto a hole that I make in the can so what I've done here I've cut off two pieces of the tubing just 10 millimeters long the length of that um, doesn't really matter to the antenna itself and um, I've also before I cut them off find it much easier to get rid of that chrome that's on here was to sand it off so we can actually solder directly onto this tubing so I've drilled a small hole in the can here and it's 17 millimeters from the back uh, base of the can here which is going to be the reflector and I've tinned around that small hole and I've got my little metal tube here that we've pre-cut and I've put a little bit of tin on that as well so now we get a nice snug fit so it actually holds itself in place it's going to make it a lot easier for us to solder and you want to get it as level as possible inside the can because uh, if you have it protruding out too much that will affect the actual wavelength of the cantenna so I've just finished soldering the tube onto which is going to be the 2.4 gigahertz can and hopefully I can pick that up on camera and it's just protruding just a little bit inside the can now I don't want to mess around desoldering it and realigning it again so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in there with a the Dremel and just uh, sand it nice and flat so what I've done here I've actually pulled back the outer braid of this coax and I've pulled it back on itself covering the actual cable here and the center conductor part of this coax I've actually soldered on a small piece of copper wire now this one's going to be for the 
2.4 gigahertz and the center element that's inside the can wants to protrude up from the can exactly 31 millimeters now I've left a little bit of a gap here where it's insulated from this outer braid so it's not touching and what I'm going to do now I'm going to put some heat shrink tubing over the top of that and then I'm going to finally measure it off then to its exact 31 millimeters so what I've done I've put the heat shrink on and I've measured it off precisely to 31 millimeters and here I've put a little bit of white masking tape around here so that when I push up through this tube I can look inside and I can see exactly when I hit that point and then I can stop and I can solder this braid onto the end of the connector here and it should all hold itself in firmly and I should be exactly 31 millimeters. So now that I'm happy I've got it uh, precisely where I want it I've packed all the outer braid down into the tube here and then I'm just going to solder up around the ends just like uh, how I do when we make the dipole antennas and then finally a little bit of heat shrink on the top just to protect it. So that one's finished off now and I'm quite happy with that and it's quite solid got the heat shrink on there now and remember this heat shrink tube is not going to do anything to interfere with the RF signals of that antenna so now I've just got the 5 gigahertz one to do. So what I've made here I've made two dipole antennas one for the 5 gigahertz here and one for the 2.4 gigahertz now if you want to know how to make these I've uh, done videos on them previously and I'll link them both in so you can make them if you like and obviously you could buy them off eBay they don't cost that much and to protect the antennas I've just got some plumber's pipe here and I've capped one end off with uh, plastic cover you normally use to cover up um, Phillips screws so what I've done with the cans I've took both of them and I've actually glued them to this bracket that I've made it's uh, just some thick plastic so uh, they're quite sturdy and I've made sure that uh, they don't touch because these cans the actual metal on the outside is uh, connected back to the ground plane so I've got a mountain on there and I've put a little uh, nut in here which will fit onto this um, bracket that I got off eBay and it's a, a security camera bracket and it only costs uh, £2.99 so it will be able to screw in there and angle it off to actually fit it to the wall and as for housing the batteries and the actual repeater itself I've got a project box here and that's going to be fitted to the back of the cans like so and I've just put some plastic on here just to raise up so we've got a bit more of a uh, surface area to glue this onto and I've drilled out two holes here to accept the omnidirectional dipole antennas and I've glued a battery compartment in here and it's going to be running off three AA rechargeable batteries and there's enough space in there to fit the motherboard for the actual repeater itself and as for the lid of this project box what I've decided to do is I've cut a hole in here so we can fit the cover off the original repeater itself because I really like the LED status lights so that's going to fit in there like so so we can just keep the lights and everything else so we can see what it's actually doing and whether it's actually powered on or not so taking a look at the board itself it uh, really is quite simple to modify this board you've got your two antennas here this longer one is the 2.4 gigahertz and the shorter one is the 5 gigahertz and what I'm going to do I'm going to desolder these antennas off here and this pin just here is where I'm going to solder my driven element center conductor of the coax to and same on this side it's this pin here and the other pins they're just connected to the ground plane of the card so that's where we're going to solder the outer coax to and hopefully I can lift these out by desoldering them but we'll have to see if uh, I can't then what I'll do is I'll just cut off here at the base of the um, feet of the antenna and these two antennas are really quite powerful little antennas it's just that I want to change them because they're actually like a closed loop antenna and the driven element and the ground plane are both connected so its performance drops off a little bit if we put a a decent antenna in there like a dipole antenna would get much better performance 
and now that we've actually got this antenna cut away this uh, leg here is going straight to the actual chip itself it's a center conductor for the signal and these two are just as I uh, presumed they are soldered directly to the ground plane of the board so we actually only need one of these so I'll probably trim that one away and keep the middle one to actually solder our ground plane of our coax onto. So we're nearing the end of the build now and all the case is virtually finished and I've put a little on off toggle switch on the top of it here which I've just wired into the positive coming off the battery and I've also for the positive and negative com that's coming off the battery I've cut off the connector that was used in the original router and I've just soldered the actual connector in there so it's easier for us to connect to the actual board. Also drilled two small holes in the base here for the coax for the antennas to come up to and we've got the coax from the dipole antennas coming in here so what I've got to do now is cut off the coax to length and solder that onto the board itself and also I've fitted the front case of the original repeater on here so we'll get all the LEDs lighting up and here is the board and I've pre-tinned all the little solder points to make it easier for me to actually connect that coax up to now what I have decided to do with this because we're actually connecting two antennas up to each point now I'm going to actually solder one antenna to the base here where the actual solder points come through and then solder the second one on the top here where the original antenna was soldered so it should um, remove some of that strain relief from having two coax cables soldered onto one solder point so you should be able to see there that's the two antennas for the 5 gigahertz all soldered in place so what I'm going to do is flip it round and then do the 2.4 gigahertz and it's been a lot easier like I said using the solder points to the top and then uh, the solder points at the bottom to connect this coax up so now that we've got all four coaxial cables soldered in place we can just mount this inside the project box now and uh, connect some power to it so here it is it's all finished off and painted and uh, I think it looks rather good a quick look round it I've got the bracket at the bottom so we can mount it and that came out rather well so we've still got all the instrumentation on here plus the uh, quick connect button and you've got the power switch on top the two dipole antennas one thing that um, I am looking at doing is putting some kind of protective cover over the cans I mean uh, I've just had a quick hunt around and I found the top off a uh, Pringle container so I just need to find something that will fit on the uh, 5 gigahertz can there probably end up cutting another one of these down I think what we'll do now is we'll pop it on the wall and give it a test and uh, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get the 2.4 gigahertz into the workshop here but um, we'll have to see if we get the 5 gigahertz into the workshop and of course I'm just going to test this with the Wi-Fi card that's built into the laptop I'm not going to use an alpha card so uh, we'll just see how good it is so I've got this stumbler running here and on a really good day I can uh, just about get a signal from my super hub but it's nowhere near enough to uh, good enough to connect to the internet uh, running about 8% there and 0% on the 5 gigahertz but here's the repeater I'm getting 64% on the 5 gigahertz and 60% on the 2.4 gigahertz and it's now connected to the internet as you can see there nice strong signal and if we go over to YouTube it's now good enough to actually browse YouTube and watch videos and whatever else I want to do on the internet so I'm really pleased how this worked out and I'm quite surprised that the 5 GHz connection was uh, slightly more powerful than the 2.4 GHz connection but um, yeah I'm really pleased how this worked out the cams themselves I would have preferred them to be a little bit longer and the 2.4 gigahertz a little bit wider but uh, I wasn't with for two kilometers distance here so uh, it uh, did work out rather well 
and it's given me a few ideas for the summer I'm thinking about a garden repeater that's also solar powered and you can switch it on with a remote key fob I think that'll be a really good project so I hope you enjoyed that and if you did please uh, subscribe and give it a big thumbs up and I'll see you for the next video